Today, I have the privilege of introducing my mayor, the mayor that I always refer to the mayors as my mayor. I think a lot of us do. I have the privilege of interviewing or introducing my mayor. And uh, when I first, uh, well, I, I should say, I thought for a time in early 2014 that I was kind of done with public service. I had spent 15 years in it, thought I had spent my entire, was done with it, and was going to move into the private sector. And then I had a chance to meet Mayor Murray. And I think it's really important to respect, appreciate, and be inspired by the person you work for. And there were a couple things that I was immediately uh, drawn to. One was his fight for marriage equality. Uh, Washington State was the first state in the country to pass marriage equality through a legislature, which uh, and the mayor, the mayor led that charge, uh, and I think it was a long, hard fight. The second one was uh, increasing the minimum wage to $15, which I think is critical to uh, reducing inequality in our society. But then I, I was really excited when I found out he had been a leader in the state on transportation issues for decades, and he had passed a funding package at the state level, and then here in Seattle, he led on the transit levy that we passed in 2014, the Move Seattle infrastructure levy that we passed in 2015, and he's leading the charge uh, to help get Sound Transit passed here in 2016. And then at the same time, he's taking bold steps and allowing us to take bold steps uh, around safety, Vision Zero, transit infrastructure, bike infrastructure, pedestrian infrastructure. But he's also leading in a ton of other areas, housing affordability, uh, police reform, education reform, parks investments. And I think it really comes from, he sees this interconnectedness in, the, uh, in our urban environment. <clears throat> the connection between land use, community building, community engagement, and maintaining affordability. And I would also say that whether you believe it or not, I think he is leading the city through one of its most challenging time periods. Uh, we're growing like a weed. We've talked a lot about that. We're experiencing affordability uh, challenges uh, that a lot of cities are facing. But we're also dealing with, at the same time, a national ho uh, homelessness crisis and restoring trust in uh, the government's ability to solve problems. And so I feel really lucky. Yesterday, I had a chance to thank my staff and talk about how I had I inherited a fantastic organization to lead. Uh, today, I get to say, I get to introduce the mayor, uh, Ed Murray. And I think the other part that's even more critical is having amazing leadership that allows uh, the department to do it, or helps the department do its work, do its work, allows it to do its work. So, with that, uh, Mayor Ed Murray. Well, thank you, Scott. And, and how many people here are actually from Seattle? Raise your hands. So to all of you, um, I want to just make a, a remark about Scott Kubley. You know, I was looking for somebody when I became uh, mayor just over two years ago who would be a visionary, who would be willing to take risks, who would move this city forward uh, in a really um, innovative, multimodal way. And Scott Kubley has been that transportation director. And uh, I can't thank you enough. And I think he deserves a special hand here. So, um, you know, it's so great to be here with people who are interested in transportation. And let me tell you why. Scott mentioned the marriage quality issue. And so generally in my political career, um, I've been criticized as being a one-issue person um, because I was the secondly openly gay person elected to state office in, in here back in the 90s. But actually, every time I introduced myself during my legislative career, I reminded people um, that I am a single issue person. 25 years ago, I was on the, I was staffed to the, to the city council's transportation committee. Then I sat on the house transportation committee. Then I was chair of the house budget transportation committee. And then I was part of the Puget Sound Regional Council transportation committee. Uh, and then I sat on the Senate transportation committee. So I am a single issue elected official, and the issue is transportation. And I know you are all transportation nerds, because I know who you are, because I know who I am. 
So um, like any of you, I could delve down into a whole bunch of different issues and then delve down again and delve down again and delve down again. And transportation is an interesting issue when you're an elected official. You know, people might have ideas out there about the healthcare system and how we should fix the healthcare system. Or they might have ideas about how to fix the education system or, or even in the environment and climate change. But when it comes to transportation, it is the only area where again and again, the individuals that I would meet with over the years who live in this city or live in this state would come with very, very intricate plans of how to solve a transportation problem. I've had neurosurgeons from UW literally come with cardboard cutouts about the, how they could rebuild our 520 bridge as it connects to the I-5 uh, corridor. And you know, the reason for that is, is why it's different than other issues is because actually we don't all use the education system at one time and we all don't hopefully use the healthcare system at one time, but everybody walks, everybody walks out their front door whether they're gonna get into a car, or on a bus, on a bicycle, or just walk. Everybody is a user of the transportation system. And if you're like me, when I'm walking, I have some pretty strong ideas about how cars should function. And when I'm on my bicycle, I have some pretty good ideas sometimes about how pedestrians should interact with cars and so forth and so on, because we all use the system. When I um, ran for mayor in 2013, the city had a bit of a history, and the region had a bit of a history of fighting on transportation um, and in many ways not moving forward. We had what I used to call mode wars, uh, the wars between whether we should have a monorail or a light rail, uh, the role of bikes versus cars, the issue around parking. And one of the things I have been committed to in my time as, as mayor and really in my time uh, in the Senate and House as a transportation leader, it is not an either or situation and when we get ourselves into that place, then we do not move forward, we become frozen. And the uh, best example for me of that was um, this state for almost two decades until 2003 and then 2005 failed to invest a single, a single cent in its transportation system despite the massive growth that was happening in the western side of the state. And it really did take individuals who are willing to compromise on the transit advocate and the environmental side and on the business more road focused side to come out wins with wins for everybody. Uh, and that has been my attitude as mayor. Um, you know, this is a 19th century street grid. And I, by, by the way, at one point when the Olmsted uh, brothers designed our park system, the city also had a bike trail system in the 19th century. Um, when I was a kid in this city, all the buses were trolley buses everywhere and you could look. But the car came, the bike paths went away, the trolleys were torn down. Uh, only to be restored later on, in, in beginning in the 70s. Um, and so my approach to this has been, it's gotta be a multimodal approach. Um, bikes and cars and pedestrians, all these things are needed. High capacity transit, all these things are needed. And especially we're a western city. Um, the options moving outside the city limits become pretty thin, so a car is gonna be part of it in a lot of cases as well. So our approach, has been to find that way to move all of these systems together as a single system versus get away from the one versus the other. Um, although as someone who is a pedestrian, it's probably the area where I have the most hostility towards all other mo modes of transportation. But, but we were able to do that. This city um, had uh, lost a transit measure a few years before I became mayor. And then we asked the vote, and then we lost a transit measure for our bus service countywide, because our, our bus service in here is, a, is a, actually a, a function of the county as well as the city. And so we decided to go out to the voters and we asked them um, for the largest increase in bus transit since the system was created, the current modern system in the 1970s. But we were also painting them a picture about how that could help cars, how that could help bicyclists, and it won, and it won by a huge amount. Last year we went back out to the voters again because we needed more than just transit. We also need to, transit corridors at work. We're a city uh, where the north and the south end were, um, were uh, um, brought into the city much later and they're much more of a suburban model. They lack a lot of sidewalks. We needed that sidewalk infrastructure and our roads and streets are crumbling. And if you're a bicyclist, 
or a pedestrian and the roads are crumbling, it's a problem for you as well it is for the person driving a car. So again, in less than two years, the voters of this city said yes to transportation. And so we have an opportunity here, unlike many jurisdictions, of actually doing the things that, that um, we have wanted to do. We're going from a city where 25% of us live near a bus that came every 12 minutes to currently a city where 72% of us live near a bus that comes every 12 minutes. And we're not done, because currently the voters have passed twice now in the, in the three county metropolitan region, uh, light rail, and currently either operating or about to be built are 15 light rail stations in the city of Seattle. But, yes, it's a good thing. But if we win in November for the next piece of our light rail system, there will be 30 light rail stations in the city of Seattle. That's New York level service in a West Coast city. Now, the other challenge that we face when we look at transportation is the challenge of growth. And, and, and let me just take a moment and, and again give you a little bit of history of the city that I live in. Uh, this city, I, I, I know that it's an incredible city. I live here, I've always lived here. But when I was probably in about the sixth grade, Boeing collapsed. Um, jobs moved out of the cities, family moved out of the cities. Um, housing became affordable, and you could park downtown because there really wasn't much to do downtown. I remember in 1984, I used to go work out of the YMCA, which is in the heart of downtown, and on a Saturday, I could park literally in front of the YMCA. Um, we lost population. We lost kids. Jobs went to Redmond, where Microsoft was, and, and to Bellevue, where the high-tech companies were. Today, it's a very different story. The city is growing faster than its suburbs for the first time in a century. Jobs are back. Uh, people want to live in the city. Kids are back. Families are back. We're bursting at the seams. We don't have enough schools. We're, just 20 years ago, we were turning schools into high-end condos. So w our other part of how you get transportation right is part of how you make a city affordable. Transportation is the second highest expense for a family that is struggling or an individual that is struggling. So we also focus and we're also focused on creating more density in the areas we call our urban villages and concentrating our affordable housing and not just apartments, single family, but multifamily housing, two and three bre bedroom units in multifamily buildings as well. We're focusing that growth and that effort at the same place that we are building out those light rail stations and that we are concentrating our bus transit service because that is how you actually get a city affordable. And the challenge for us getting affordable is pretty significant. Right now in the downtown core of Seattle, Seattle South Lake Union area, there are 65 buildings under construction, more than at any other time in the city's history. 65 cranes. And that, again, is only the downtown core. There are 8,000 residential units in the downtown core that will come online in the next 18 months and a 30% increase in hotel rooms in the next 18 months. So you see our challenge when it comes to transportation, our ability to move people in and out and around of the city so the jobs stay and don't go away because people are choked out of it, but also with that level of growth, and I want to bring it back to the point I was making, we are focused intentionally right now through a series of actions of building affordable housing and building that affordable housing and low-income housing where transit exists. Because the ultimate goal is a city where you can afford to live here. And you can afford to live in a neighborhood not unlike the one I grew up in out in West Seattle, where you can walk to school, you can walk to a park, you can get on a bus and be in one of our neighborhood business uh, districts to be able to shop. That's the goal that we're working on. And like many West Coast cities, Western cities, uh, we weren't necessarily built that way, so we're, we're doing a lot of infilling to create that. But all of these things don't work. The issue of affordability, the issue of livability, don't work unless we get transportation right, and particularly unless we get transit right. Um, so I hope you have a, um, an incredible visit here to Seattle. I hope you see the things that we are doing right. 
I also hope that you give us ideas about things that maybe we're not getting right and give us ideas uh, about what we can learn from, from your cities. And with that, welcome to the city of Seattle. Enjoy our weather. We are a sales tax dependent city, so please spend a lot of money. Thank you. <laughs>